This launch option has been getting more headlines than simple. People are copying it, pissing it in their CS2 launch settings like it's a magic fix. And honestly, I get it. Who has time to test every setting? But if you care about buttery smooth gameplay, you might want to understand what the setting actually does. So what makes CS2 feel good? Good frame pacing, a high refresh rate monitor, low input latency, and in some of your cases, screen tearing. I'm not one of those. So what is frame pacing? On a 60 hz monitor, each frame takes about 17 milliseconds to display. On a 144Hz, about 7 milliseconds, 240Hz, about 4 milliseconds, 360Hz, about 2.7 milliseconds per frame. So lower is better, right? Yes, but also no. Here's the twist. If your game's frame time isn't stable, even high FPS won't feel smooth. You'll get little stutters, spikes, and inconsistent input timing, even if your FPS counter says 500. What you want is a consistent experience. Take Thor's benchmark video. He used a specific launch config that reduces frame time and boosted 1% lows. It's a really great option, and yeah, for his system, it slapped. But Here's the trade-off, that config also queues frames, so while your game looks smooth, your inputs are delayed, that's called input lag, and it's what makes your game feel disconnected. In simple words, if you're facetiming your friend, it's like real time, right? Even though there's shitters and stuff like that, it's real time, so that's reflex. But no reflex is like it's completely smooth, it's completely consistent, but it's not really real time, it's slightly delayed. So what setting am I running? I'm running on plus boost. So should you just copy my setting because it's the best setting? Well, no. Your system is different. My system is different. We have to do a couple of tests to find out what is the best setting for you. And I'm going to show you how to do that exactly after I tell you how to find the best skins in the marketplace. So check out Skins Monkey, the trusted automated CS2 trading site. Swap the skins you don't want for the ones you do. Use the handy filters to find the perfect fit. And if you're a little shy on funds, you can deposit with tons of options and get up to 35% extra bonus if you use my code COOK. Site offers live support 24-7. You can also claim up to free $5 using my code or by clicking the link in the description. First of all, you want to make sure you've installed Reva Tuner and Calf Remix. Meanwhile, let me show you some interesting stats from the benchmark map itself. So first, we have a very entry-level system. Over here, you can see two graphs. One is clearly better than the other, and that is the no reflex option. In our entry level system, we get an average of 249 with the option and 230 with just disabled, which is 8.2% better. Now let's compare it with our 1% lows. Over here, again, the graph shows something quite indicative, but to be honest, the raw amount is really not that much, but percentage increase seems quite a bit. Again, our second setup, we have our RTX 3060. The reason is quite interesting, I'll tell you later. Over here, again, we see the graphs, but the improvement is really not that drastic. With minus no reflex option in the launch option, we have like 515 and with disabled, it's like 509, which is 1.1% better within margin of error. Then when we get to see the bad symbol for 1% loss, you see that this option really doesn't work for us if we just put it in the launch option especially if you are just measuring from the in-game performance which is rendering at game level now this is paired with the 5070 ti and you can see again very minuscule improvement which it, at this stage it doesn't even matter like 1.54 if you do a 100 tests like it comes down to zero then again we measure the one person lows here so with no reflex at one person low you get about 261 and with disabled you get about 255 just 2.35% improvement so spending about $500 extra you get about 10 frames extra when it comes to one person lows so make sure you set a hotkey set the capture time to 103 I didn't set it to 105 I set it to 103 make sure you do not have any sort of limiters here like you don't want anything limiting your FPS we'll do it later using the NVIDIA control panel and of course I want to test all settings now in order to replicate everything I'm using the FPS benchmark map but we'll not be using this value because they're rendered from the game engine and a lot of these values are smoothed over time so they're not really true 
Rovell is there like more of smooth stuff. Also keep an eye out on your GPU usage and your temperature. You don't want to have 100% usage all the time. Now let's try to see things at reflex disabled and uncapped frame. You see we still have stuttering of about 5.77 seconds which is quite bad. And then when we jump to reflex enabled, everything remains almost the same. Our frame times are almost the same, but the stuttering is also the same. It's still around 5.55 seconds, which is not ideal. Then we jump to enable plus boost. Again, our stuttering has increased very, very slightly and our frames, well, they're not really disturbed that much. And our frame pacing, well, that's kind of same as well. Well, things start getting interesting when we do no reflex. Still stuttering is high, but the frame rate is uncapped. Now let's look at our capped frame rate at 640. A stuttering has reduced to 0.16 seconds and a one person lower average has jumped to 290. That's actually really, really good. And our frame times are decent again. Now let's try to optimize this. It's around 512 cap now and our 1% low is at 351 and our stuttering has reduced to 0.08 seconds. That's amazing. Like this setting is really, really amazing. Let's try to optimize that even further. So I go to NVCP 448 max rate and now my 1% low is around 381 and my stuttering is about 0.04 seconds. Look at that frame time graph. Like it's, it's beautiful. It's nice. Especially if I have a 240Hz monitor. Now with NVCP set at 480 and enabled, there's something that you can notice. One person low average has gone down, of course, but the stuttering has been removed. So capping your frame rate actually kind of helps you with stuttering. And that's good news. And again, if I just run uncapped with no reflex, you can see like on my entry level system is bad. And if I just run no reflex with capped at 192, even though my 1% low is bad, the stuttering is removed. So capping your frame rate is good. So what would I change in my setting now? I would cap it, but I would still run enabled. And the reason is input lag. People underestimate like how bad it feels sometimes when you're trying to track your enemy and you're just not able to. Like it feels like you're ever so slightly behind it. Now, a lot of people are going to give you latency numbers from CAF Remix. Just know that this is not true end-to-end -end latency. It is rendering latency and that is not true at all. If you want to conduct this test, either you need a very high resolution camera and by high resolution I mean high hertz camera or an LDAT device, which is only given to some creators. I do not have it, so I cannot test it. Anyone else who tries to say like, is significantly better well i don't know what you want to do is get a feel whether you want to sacrifice that input lag or not i would cap my frame rate to about 500 and set it to enabled but if no reflex and capping your frame rate feels better that is definitely the right option for you